Hello, my name is Tim Lukings and this is Tuesdays with Tim. Our weekly devotional now moves to the book of Job. I'd like to remind you that our walk through the Bible is a chronological study. This means that we will look at it in the order of events as they took place rather than book by book or chapter by chapter. So I encourage you to read Job chapters one to five in preparation for this devotional. Have you ever thought about you being talked about in heaven? Do you wonder when your name is mentioned what God says about you? In our text, Satan had been prowling around, no doubt like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But one day when all of the angels were presenting themselves before God, Satan went with them. After all, he was created as Lucifer, a magnificent angel who had succumbed to pride. He no longer had a home in heaven, but seemingly was allowed to attend such a gathering. And when he told God that he had been roaming the earth, God said, have you considered my servant Job? I'm sure some would think that God didn't do Job any favors, that he kind of threw Job under the chariot, if you will. <laughs> The reality is that God had such complete confidence in Job's faith, his desire to serve the Lord, and his determination to live a righteous life, that he drew Satan's attention to such a committed and upright servant. He was proud of Job. What an amazing honor. God looked down upon all of humanity and pointed out an individual and said, look at him. I can trust that guy. The experiences that Job went through are beyond most people's wildest fears. None of us would seek that. On the other hand, our goal should be to know that God would see us as being the kind of person that could handle anything that life or Satan could throw at us. We should seek to become the person that God has complete confidence in to serve him and to live as he wants us to live, no matter what. The Apostle Paul said a very strange thing. He said, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Philippians 3, 10 to 12. It's hard to get into the brain of the apostle here. Paul certainly had his moments. In his testimony, he wrote the following verses. Keep in mind that this was written prior to his letter to the Philippians. He, he still did not feel that he understood the suffering of Christ, even though he had some incredibly horrible experiences on this earth. He said this, five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. That's 2 Corinthians 11, 24 to 28. And yet Paul says that he wants to fellowship in the sufferings of Christ. I don't think that Paul thought that he would get any brownie points with God for experiencing unusually harsh suffering on the earth or that it would make him more spiritual or that there was any glory in it. What I do believe is that Paul had a deep desire to fully understand the depth of suffering that Jesus experienced for our salvation. He knew that the only way to fully understand would be to fully experience that kind of suffering. What impresses me is the confidence that he, had, uh, that he had in himself to be able to handle it. God had that kind of confidence in Job, and Job didn't let him down. I'm not propagating the idea that we should seek after suffering, nor am I suggesting that those who do experience great suffering on earth are either more or less spiritual than anyone else. That, that's not for me to judge. What I'm saying is that I hope when my name or yours is mentioned in heaven, it is because God has found us faithful. 
I hope that it's an expression of trust in us to live as he desires and to fulfill the purposes that he has for his life, no matter what life throws at us. Someday I want to stand in the hallways of heaven, have Jesus look at me in the eye and say my name and proclaim, well done, thou good and faithful servant. My name is Tim Lukings, and this has been Tuesdays with Tim.